Have you ever had the thought, if I could just grow my audience, my sales will be exactly where they need to be? Have you thought that? Have you ever had the belief that your audience on your platforms right now, they're not the right people. They're not ideal. They're not my ideal client avatar. I just need to start over or I need to have a different platform to be able to get those right people in front of me. It makes sense to believe that. And like, there are a lot of people that preach that, that you've got to only talk to your ideal avatar. And I do believe that's true. I also think sometimes people use that as an excuse as to why they're not making sales and believe that it is externally the problem when really it is the sales message and the lack of conversion that's happening with the current audience that you have. And this is a really big problem because, you know, if you can't convert who you have right in front of you, it's going to be really hard to convert other people and more people. And what ends up happening is people focus on being more visible and going viral without thinking about their conversions. And then you end up having an audience and not a business, not income. And I don't know about you, but I ain't trying to have an audience. I'm not trying to be famous. I'm trying to make some money and make a business work. Okay. So if that's you, if you're like, I want to like make money, no matter what kind of audience I have, no matter how many followers I have, no matter what my platforms look like, this is for you. I will never forget going to a um, conference and I was speaking on a panel. This was in 20, maybe 2020, late 2019. Um, and someone came up to me, was asking me about sales. And I was like, oh, let me see your Instagram. I was really curious. She had hundreds of thousands of followers and had a $15 ebook that she was having a hard time selling. $15, $15. And to make it even more painful in the heart, she had the ebook that made sense for the audience that she had. So hypothetically, let's say it was like a DIY platform. The ebook had to do with DIY, like it all made sense and she still wasn't selling it. So um, this just proves the follower count has very little indication to do with the sales that are being made. And on the other side of the spectrum, there have been weeks where I, I've done posts that have maybe gotten a couple of likes, like very little engagement. Like I know one specific day, it was a Wednesday. I'll never forget. I posted three times and each one of the posts maybe got 10 to 15 likes. Okay. Likes, very, very little engagement. But that day I also made $70,000 that one day. And the reason that is like, I wish you to think about this. Selling is getting someone to take action, okay? So you could consider a like, an action, a save, an action, a share, an action. And if you know anything about Instagram, like if you look at the analytics, if someone likes, shares, saves, or comments, all of that is good because it indicates an action. Well, while I do love those actions, I'm not mad about them and I'm very happy when that does happen, the ultimate action I want people to take is to buy. And um, oftentimes people will take these, like, let's say it says, like, there's a post that's like five ways to cook broccoli. Okay. You'll save it. That's the action you'll take. But nine times out of 10, you don't ever revisit that post ever again. That action of saving, it kind of gives you this dopamine rush that makes you think that you actually made the broccoli and ate the broccoli. And we all know you did not And so therefore you didn't get the ultimate result that you want. And this is why as a sales girl, it is so important that the action that you get to people to, to take is to buy because the transformation happens after the buying happens. So it's really your duty to do that. And I want to talk about, I have three things that you can do right here in my notebook, right in front of me, three things to sell. That's not your offer that helps turn your current audience into the right audience. And I want to tell you just a very quick story of how I did this without even realizing that I was doing it. When I first started my entrepreneurship journey, I was just desperate, like with a capital D, <laughs> to have a bigger life, to experience something more. It's crazy how you work so hard in school to get the job that you want, and then you get the job that you want, and you're like, wait, what? This is this is it? I like come to work, and I sit at this desk, and I do the things, and then I go home, and then I have dinner, and then I wake up, and I do it again. What? And it was so painful for me. I was just like, and it was like, I actually loved the job. It was just the, the monotonous of knowing what to expect and the routine. Like I just knew that there was more inside of me. And so the best thing I knew to do was to sell a product that was so easily available. Um, and that was network marketing. 
like if you think about network marketing, it's, it really is a great place to start because all you have to do is sell. That's all you have to do. You don't have to create any backend stuff. You don't have to create any links. You don't have to service anything. You don't have to ship anything. You just sell. And so it's a really good place to kind of have this proof of concept that you can make money by selling and therefore you can learn to do all those other things. Um, and so when I started selling network marketing products, it was health and wellness. I was like really struggling. I couldn't believe how much harder it actually was. You you hear, you just have to sell and you're like, oh, it's it shouldn't be that hard. It's no problem. Well, I actually started doing it. And I just sat down in front of my phone doing Instagram stories at the time. And I was like, how do I do this? How do I talk about the product? And because I didn't really know how, I talked about everything but the product. My whole life was like the backdrop of me trying to sell this offer. And you know, when I go back and I think about what, what made me do that at the time, it was called curiosity marketing, where it was like, you, um, make people like love you and be curious about you so that they ask about your product. And honestly, that kind of worked. I did get a little bit of engagement. The problem is I got engagement about the stuff that I was talking about. So I remember we were painting our house. And so the questions weren't about, Hey, what are you selling? It was like, what color is the paint? What are you wearing today? What is that um, recipe? And it wasn't really about what I was trying to do. I wasn't being direct. When I learned sales skills, my dad taught me all the sales skills that I know. We had like a very intensive six months where we practiced, I role played, I'd implement. And that's where I learned, oh, you can be like so direct, so clear, so charismatic, and people enjoy watching you. Um, I kind of struggled with this tension at first of like, I don't want to lose people, right? Like I want to sell my offer, but I don't want to lose them. But there's a way to communicate where you can have both engagement, directness, and sales. And that was the perfect like tie a bow on a package. And I was just like, mm, I found it. I found it. I found it. I found it. And then that's when I started to see how I had something special that other people didn't have. It was painfully obvious. I would just watch influencers. I would talk to people at stores, like boutiques, restaurants, um, even just my friends. I was just talking to them and I'm just like, oh, if they just knew what I knew, they just had what I had, um, it would change their life. And that's when I wanted to pivot from health and wellness to sales skills, which is like the most unsexy thing you could possibly sell. Can I just point that out? I'm selling sales skills. <laughs> like the more I think about it, I'm like, I could have just sold like making more money, um, like the life of your dreams, which that is really ultimately the transformation. But at the time I was like, I want people to see and believe that sales skills is for them. That's, that's all I wanted. And so when I would talk to my dad about putting this material together to take it to market, I didn't even know the online course world existed at this time. I um, kind of fell into it when I had this off, like I had this, this masterpiece. I was like, oh my gosh, this is what I need. How do I get it to the world? That's when I found the online course world. And that's when my whole world just totally opened up. And so as I was learning this new world of online courses, how to create a learning environment, how to transfer this information and transform people, it took us probably about a year to pull it together. Um, he taught me based on a spreadsheet, like literally I would sit by him on the beside him with his computer in front of him. And he would just pull up spreadsheet after spreadsheet, after spreadsheet, after spreadsheet of all the decades, three decades, 30 years of really being obsessive about sales skills and learning them. He grew up super poor. He had this pull to learn how to sell. And then he just went all in on that. And he ended up um, building a, a business and really making the foundation, this sales culture, which is why he had all this material. So we spent this year like organizing it, trying to figure out how to film it. Do we do it? Lot? I mean, it just really was trying to wrap our minds around how to do this. So while that was happening behind the scenes, like I want you to think about undercover building this, this material, which I actually don't recommend being undercover, but that's just kind of all I knew at the time. Um, publicly on Instagram. And I chose Instagram stories because it was just so quick. It was low risk, went away in 24 hours and I could quickly engage with people. It was just the perfect situation. I was selling beliefs. I was selling an identity and I was demonstrating the power of sales skills. 
And, um, I didn't even really talk about an offer being created at all. All I did was really talk about sales skills or life skills. And I sold that belief. And over time, the engagement that I got was like, oh, I've never thought about it that way. Wow. You make a really good point. I see your point here, but I'm not sure about this. I have a question. And it was just all this engagement, all this conversation that was like on a stage essentially to lots of people, but a lot of back and forth. And by the time it was, it was time to present our offer and to make the offer, this whole group of people were already sitting in this place of, I think I need this. I, I believe that sales skills are life skills. I see the power that, um, I could have if I had these skills. And so they all, they wanted to buy it based on that year of selling these things. And my first launch, I think like 25 people bought or something. Um, it was like a $700, I think around seven, 700, 900. I remember the revenue being close to 20,000. Cause I was like, wait, what? Cause my, my big aha moment was $10,000 months with my network marketing business. I was like, wait, what? You didn't do $10,000 months. I didn't even know that those words like went together. That's crazy. And then when I had a $20,000 week, I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Are you getting me? This, this is possible. And I know that that week was so powerful because of all of this, of what I'm about to tell you, turning the audience who originally followed me for health and wellness and turning them into people to believing that they needed sales skills. That is like the most opposite ends of the spectrum that I can think of in this moment right now. It's it's really honestly such an amazing ability to be able to do this. Okay. So let's talk about number one. If you're taking notes, write down number one, sell the belief, sell a belief. And there might be multiple beliefs. I said the belief because I like the idea of having one belief that you just drive home in new and different ways. But I also like the idea of playing with lots of beliefs to be able to discover that one belief. So either one. Now, all a belief is, is a repeated thought. My very first copy coach told me, like my first homework was to list out 10 beliefs that people needed to believe in order to buy from me. That was the first homework. And the way I could not wrap my head around of of like what she meant when she said beliefs, I was like beliefs, like I always associated belief with like, um, like my faith. And I didn't understand that beliefs were just thoughts. Like if you have a thought about money, like whatever your thoughts are about money, that's your belief about money. Whatever your thoughts are about your marriage, like those are your beliefs about the concept of marriage. And when I really started to learn that, I was like, Oh, when you give someone a thought and they believe it to be true, you are writing the script for them to think you're, you're giving them like when people are like, you were in my head. I'm like, yes. And I like wrote the script to go in your head. It wasn't by accident, by any means. I delivered it to you by helping you believe it. And let me tell you why this is so powerful. Any action, write this down. Any action you do or you don't take is because of belief. Any action, like really think about this. Anything you do or don't do, or a belief, a thought, is it's from a thought, right? So um, let's think about like a piece of cake, okay? You can have one thought that's like, I want that so bad. That looks so good. I deserve this. This is a birthday party. Of course you have cake. This is a celebration. This is the holidays. This is what you do. Everybody else is having cake. I should have cake too. This isn't a problem. It's not a big deal. What are you going to do? You're going to eat the cake, right? Then another person could see the cake at a birthday party and think, you know, I keep promises to myself. I'm committed to my health right now. I can enjoy this party um, without food. Like I can enjoy the company of people. I can enjoy the environment and I don't eat the cake. That sugar will um, you know, ultimately make me feel terrible in a couple of hours. Like the, do you see how these two people with two different trains of thoughts will equal different actions? So with selling, you get to offer these new thoughts and persuade them to believe it. Now I want to just point out how that circumstance at a birthday party with cake, same exact circumstances, two different sides of the coin, right? There's two different ways of thinking. There's two different 
options. And this really kind of points back to this law of polarity, which is everything has an equal and opposite reaction. What does that mean? That means that there is always like a positive and a negative, a pro and a con, a reason to do something, a reason not to do something, a reason to think one way about something, a reason not to think about everything, every single thing in life. There is one and the other, and then there's a spectrum. And so when you are, quote, writing the script in someone's head, you are helping them have, I I like to think about it as like equal airtime of the other perspective. So let me give you an example. One of the things that people often think about is how sales is gross. Salespeople are in it for themselves. Salespeople are scammy. Salespeople um, do bad things in order to make money. And honestly, it makes sense. Like a first step for you is to kind of just sit in their seat. It can be really easy to be reactive and honestly a little bit defensive because I know I've been there too. Um, But just sit in their seat and just think about like, hmm, how could they think this? Why, Why would it make sense for them to think it? And like, for me, I always think about Matilda, the movie, the dad in that movie is a car salesman and he is like the villain. He is the total villain in that whole movie. And I'm like, oh, if they grew up watching that movie, of course, they think about this stuff. It's no problem. What are some other pieces of evidence? What are some other examples that demonstrate the opposite here? And that's where I really kind of talk about this idea of persuading for good and how a lot of people are experiencing amazing sales experiences and amazing salespeople every single day. And they don't even realize that it's happening. And the example I love to use is of a dentist. Um, my dad has been to lots of dentists over his dentists over his lots of years of life. And every dentist tells him to floss every single day, but there's only one dentist that sold him, that persuaded him so well to floss that he now takes the action of flossing every single day. That is a salesperson persuading for good. And so that's a perfect example of really offering another perspective and giving it equal airtime. And when you start to see, okay, people think sales is bad, I just need to inch them over to believing that salespeople are good and sales skills are for good people. And the more that you're able to say that message in a ton of different ways, the more that people will like, will will believe it and they'll actually enjoy watching you. I want you to think about this as like building a case. You would never say, hey, this person is innocent. You can just trust me. She's my friend. I love her. She's amazing. You can trust me. You would never do that. You would come with undeniable evidence, overwhelming evidence of why she's innocent. So there would be no margin of doubt at all. That's how I want you to think about your beliefs. How can I bring overwhelming evidence, unbelievable certainty to people that this is the way to believe and to think? This is not a one stop shop. This is a process. I will say, like, over that year, I remember there were some people that were like, oh, I see it. And like instantly they were on the other side, believing that sales skills were life skills and sales skills were good. And then I remember being in conversation with people for weeks, months, sometimes years, helping them inch over to sitting into that place and really believing it. Um, So it's a process. And that's what's so awesome about the process is not only do you bring people along with you, but you become better within the process itself as well. Okay. The second thing you can sell is an identity. Sell an identity. And I'll tell you why this is so insanely insanely powerful. It's crazy. We as people are tribal. We like to be a part of groups. This is why it is incredibly difficult to evolve, right? Um, Because if you start making more money than your current tribe, it is going to be painful for your current tribe to watch you, quote, leave them. If you start losing weight compared to your current tribe, they are going to say, don't go, don't go, don't go, stay here. So how can you be the person that leaves your tribe, even though the current to go back to your old tribe is so strong? And in my opinion, it is to find another tribe. If you know that there's another tribe out there that believes what you believe, that thinks how you think, you're going to be like, oh, hey, I can leave you because there's a safe place for me over here. And so when you sell an identity, you start to create a group of people that have similar beliefs and values. And you can think about a tribe, like what makes a tribe? What makes people get along 
And it's nine times out of 10, their beliefs, their values, their perspectives, how they see the world. And um, that is uh, correlates with selling your beliefs. But what I like when I think about selling an identity is calling it something like we call it the sales girls. And um, it's been really cool because we recently have gone all in with this identity. I'll tell y'all, I fought being all in on women for a really long time. I just know I could help so many people and especially men um, because a lot of men sell and a lot of people need to um, like have these beautiful like characteristics and, and skills that you learn in our, in our training with, which is like enthusiasm and um, being partners with people and guiding them that those kind of softer characteristics I know would benefit men so well. But when we finally just went all in on the identity of sales girls, I will tell you the release I felt and the ability to just to go all in on that has been so freeing. But here's what's so insane about this identity and selling this identity. Ever since we've gone all in, there have been more men than ever that are like, I want to be a sales girl. How do I become a sales girl? I'm not even kidding you. In our mastermind, um, there's this one guy that uh, we saw online in our calls. His name is Mark, and um, he's a you know middle aged man. He hosts podcasts and he's on TV segments. Just a really awesome, charismatic guy. And once he had a call with us, he found us on Instagram, and he messaged us and he was like, "Oh my gosh, um, I love your stuff." He subscribed to our Sales Girl Social newsletter, and then we saw him at our event. He was like, I want to be a sales girl so bad. How do I become one? And it's a joke, but it's the most interest I feel like men have ever had in what we do that ever before than, than when we went into sales girl identity. It is just so cool. And I love it. Um, another like example of this, one thing that we uh, value, remember you're selling identities and identities have similar values. One thing we value is just like getting ready. Right. We value being ready as a whole package um, and being really ready to walk into opportunity. That's the principle here is being ready to walk into opportunity. And well, what I have found is that belief, that value, whenever I talk about it on social, gets by far the most engagement. I've tested it in all different um like scenarios. Like I love to do a get ready with me, and those do typically really well. And so I was like, Hmm, is this, does this do well because it's a get ready with me or does this do well because of the message? And so I tested doing that same message, slightly different, um, in the car and it did just as well. So it did well, number one, but it also gets the most controversial comments and the most disagreeing comments. And that's amazing, right? When we are tribe, you come together with the people that you value this, where you value the same things, and you separate yourself from people who don't value the same things. That's good. Polarity is good. You can't have love without a little bit of hate, right? You can't have all love. Then you just become indifferent. And so you want the love and you want the controversy. So that's another huge benefit with selling an identity and really going for it. The third and final thing that you can do to turn your audience into the right audience is to be a demonstration of what is possible when they believe what they need to believe and when they identify with your tribe, be a demonstration. And this goes 10 times further than any words that you'll ever say, like truly, because you get to be a vision. You get to be a mental picture. You get to place a seed in someone's brain of what their life could look like when they follow your lead. And this is so powerful because people move towards their most dominant thought and their most dominant thought, like, yes, it's a sentence, but also it's a little bit of a picture in your head. This is why visualization is so powerful. You start to walk towards that and create your environment based on what you see in your brain. And it's interesting. There've been so many small moments in my life where people just place like a, a, a vision in my head that I never saw myself as. And it really, really helped me be where I am today. For example, when I was like 15, my hairdresser told me, you should start a YouTube channel. Here I am on YouTube right now starting a YouTube channel. I wish I did it when I was 15. That was, you know, 17 years ago, um, but I didn't. What it did do is place a seed in my head of, oh, he sees something in me that I don't see in myself. Hmm. He sees that I could be 
in front of a camera communicating to people in some capacity. Huh, I've never thought about myself that way. And that seed, like it just kept getting watered over the years. It kept getting fertilized. And here I am, never thought in a million years I'd be on stage, on Instagram, on YouTube, talking about sales skills. But I really do believe that seed played a huge part in this. Another example, my business partner, Kat, um, she was told, you are going to be on the Today Show one day. You're going to be the Today Show dietitian. And that seed, like she thought about that all the time. And while she's not on the Today Show necessarily, she's speaking in front of a camera just a slightly different flavor of that same seed. And um, I want to tell you a quick story of um, this woman. I want to make sure I get her name right. Her name is Mary Chadwick, and she wanted to become the first swimmer to swim the English Channel both ways. And so this was in 1950. She set out on this track to do so, and she swam for 14 hours. And I want you just to just picture this. So it's foggy. There are three boats around her. One is um, a coach. One is someone in the boat shooting sharks that approach her. Can you imagine? And one of the boats has her mom in it, who's just, I'm a mom, so I get it. She's like, baby, why are you doing this? Who are you trying to prove? What are you trying to prove? Get out of this boat. What are you doing? And so after 14 hours, she was exhausted and she crawled back in the boat and decided to call it quits. When the fog lifted, she saw her shoreline in front of her. It was about a mile away. It was so close. And only how many months later? And only two months later, two, two months later, she came back to that same quest and she swam that distance in half the time. Now, when someone asked her, Mary, what was different between last time and this time? And she said, I saw the shoreline in my brain. I saw how close it was. That vision is what moved her to do it again. Hello, to do something really hard again and to do it twice as fast. And obviously with twice the amount of confidence. So when you're a demonstration, you place that vision in people's minds and their hearts and their spirits to move quickly, take action quickly to the island where the new tribe is. Do you see how powerful that is? So how, how can you create these visualizations and demonstrations? Honestly, like the way I want you to think about this is if nobody, or excuse me, I want you to think about it like this. If you had a camera crew following you around and nobody was watching you, does your life represent your message? When you can make sure your whole life is representing what you believe, the byproduct is you will be a demonstration, like truly. And then some tactical things is like B-roll, right? How can you film yourself in scenarios that demonstrates what you believe? Um, for example, like I really believe in moving your body. So I'll do some workout videos as a B-roll with a message on top of the screen. Um, believe in getting ready. So we'll do some getting ready B-roll with a message either as a voiceover on top of the screen or while I'm getting ready. Just those demonstrations are really, really huge. And then also just like the result of, like the transformation of, demonstration is really, really powerful. Like for example, um, now that I have sales skills and I'm able to sell, I'm able to make money when I want, how I want, and do it really, really effectively. I'm able to pick up my kids from school at two 30 every day, no problem. And still make lots of money, lots of, and give people lots of results. That demonstration is really huge as well. I hope that this was helpful. So how do you turn your current audience into the right audience? You sell your beliefs or sell the belief that people need to believe, sell the identity, and be a demonstration of what's possible when they take on the identity and when they take on those beliefs. Make sure you subscribe for more. We'll see you in the next video. Have an awesome day.